welcome to the Soulful Business Series. This week, I have a very special guest who is American, but he lives in Byron Bay. His name is Jeffrey Slater. And Jeffrey came across my path recently and I just went, wow, this man not only has a vision, he has made it real. He has a dose of realism for spiritual entrepreneurs that I'm really excited to bring through today. He is an international speaker and an author and he runs events around the world and he inspires people to really tap into what their soul calling is and become financially independent and live an emotionally free life. So I'm very excited to have Jeffrey here with us today. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, on, this, uh, on this call. Yeah. Um, so you're coming to us from Byron Bay, which is, if anyone knows Byron Bay in Australia, it's such a beautiful place, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. I mean, it's a place of, uh, a place where people go to heal and so that they can find more about who they are and bring it out to the world. It's a nice sanctuary. Yeah. So important, isn't it? To be in an environment that really feels like home and, and to be around nature and Byron has the most amazing beaches and you've already been surfing today. So that's perfect. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I feel very grateful to have the morning surf uh, with the dolphins and everything. It's a, it's a nice place. It's a nice place. Yeah. So let's get stuck into the nitty gritty of what soulful business is to you. So tell me about, how you started out in your business, you know, many, many years ago, because I know you're very successful now, you know, you've made your millions and now you're really sharing and seeding your right. wisdom and knowledge around the world and inspiring others. So what is it that you've learned along the way about your soulful business? Well, I, that I'm still learning, you yeah. know, just, just this morning I was out for a surf and there weren't actually many people out. It was quite nice. Sometimes it can get quite crowded here. And for some reason, the waves weren't that good, but there was enough of a, a swell where it was, there was surf. And so I said, I'm going to go out this today. I never really regret a swim, it seems like, you know, to go out. And it's oftentimes those times when I don't really want to go because it doesn't quite, you know, is when I just go and it seems to work. And so I went out and I was paddling around and maybe two or three people out, which is very, very small, not very crowded. And, uh, there were these dolphins that just were right there, like a foot away. And they were just, it was so beautiful. And I, and it was just stunning. And there, the waves weren't very plentiful, but I still found a way to enjoy myself. And I asked myself the same question, you know, if I were to just start over today, everything, what would I change in my life and in my business? And I asked myself that question quite a bit and it allows me to make the adjustments. So what is a soulful business? I mean, the soul is, uh, something that's always growing and I'm always learning from it and it's, it's endless. So for me, it's, uh, it's still being defined and I don't think it's definable. Mm. Mm. So. And I like, I like how you, um, you're very real about that aspect that, you know, the journey is never over. And especially in business, you, there is no finish line because as soon as you, you get to what you thought the finish line was, you know, if you're, if, especially if it's a financial goal, like I've made a million dollars, there's always the next thing and there's always more growth. There's an, always a new cycle. Um, to yeah, start you know, it's good, but it, it, I had to hit, I remember when I, my first goal when I was in my twenties was to buy a house and I bought a house and then I was like, now what? Then I bought another one and then another. And it just, I stopped. I was like, who cares? It, it started to kind of like, go one thing after another, after another. And I realized that was an empty road. Mm. Um, and then uh, same with the money, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to make this much. And then I'm going to make this. I realized all the roads are empty externally. Um, I'm going to get this kind of car. And I got that car and it was, I left, you know, maybe 30 days. I was happy about that car. Nothing external mm. made me any, any more happy. <laughs> and, but I had to go through the experience in order to, to honor that. So achievement, I realized, wasn't all it's cracked up to be. And so then I went out, I was like, I'm going to go make a difference at a big, big level. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to get on stage with Tony Robbins and Sir Richard Branson and the biggest stages in the world. Yes, that will be it. 
that will make me happy. And that will be the marking point as if there was a finish line. Cause it wasn't the financial thing. It wasn't the assets. It wasn't the toys. I tried all that. And then I realized maybe it's the impact. Maybe when I hit this certain impact, it'll, that'll be the time when it's at the finish line. Oh. I remember the time my major thing was be on stage with Tony Robbins. So a couple thousand people, no, I think it was like 4,000, 4,000 people or so. Tony went on after us and I got on and I was like, it was, it was just, it was great, but it was like uh, this is kind of empty thing. And I realized I was shooting for the stars my whole life, but I forgot to keep my feet on the earth. Oh. And, uh, and it was an interesting realization. So what, now what, how, for the people that are just starting, they're listening to this, uh, remember, you know, sure, get it done, build those, build that business, but make sure you carve time out in the day to enjoy what's happening now so that you see the now while you shoot for the stars. I actually say we can shoot for the stars and be here too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like a spectrum, isn't it? It's people tend to be at one end of, or the other, you know, they're very high achievers. They achieve a lot, you know, in this physical world financially or otherwise. Sure. And then there's the other end that are very spiritually and emotionally fulfilled in their lives, but yeah. don't may not have that external um, signposts of success. So what's your advice on really bridging those two and, and finding that balance? Uh, well, success has the definition of success that mainstream culture likes to pump on us is house, white picket fence, a couple million dollars in a bank or more or millions, whatever. And then it, the degree of financial uh, assets is your definition of success. That's what mainstream wants us to believe. I, I, I would disagree with it. Um, I, I think that mainstream culture is like a culture that we're born into that, that, you know, hence the word cult. It's a cult that we didn't, didn't know we were really a part of. And when we challenge that, we're able to evaluate what our term of actually success is. And for me, uh, you know, my definition of success is being able to wake up and do what I love and every day. That if that means surfing, working in my garden, um, if that means spending time with people like you that are sharing a message, if that means speaking to an audience, if that means working with executives and CEOs on building their companies, that's what I want to do. But everyone has their own term. And one thing I've hit is I got to define that for me. Forget what culture says success is. If somebody's listening to this and your definition of success is, is living in nature in two acres, having no expenses, living completely off the grid, and then being on podcasts and talking to the world and speaking, then go do that. You don't need to make millions. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love I mean, it. It's what it means to you. Just define right? it. Yeah. Define yeah. it. So uh, who am I to say what success is? Yeah. And I think that's something really key about soulful business is it's about following your own rhythm and your own desires and defining the life that you want for yourself. It's not about fitting into it into another culture or yeah. what is going to be socially accepted. So, you know, in a way it's like, we're all, well, especially soulful entrepreneurs are really carving their own path uh, in their own right. And sometimes doing something a little bit radical or something that is going to push a few buttons <laughs> around them. Um, and, you know, it's something that you're really starting to do more of, isn't it? It's, you're really finding that groove now for yourself. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, it's uh, to think, I think the day I say I found it is the day I've lost it. Yeah. So yeah. I, it's oh, I a, it's, it seems to be a quite a journey. Yeah, I mean, in a week I go to South America for, there'll be no internet, no phone, just totally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and I, I have about, 18 busy professionals and entrepreneurs, some very, very successful. And we're going to go spend time in the jungle uh, with some incredible medicine men and women. I, you know, and it's funny because I'm sure there are people listening to this that have heard of the ayahuasca, San Pedro, and these incredible plant medicines. Um, and I say medicines, or I will call them for more respect, even medicines or eth ethiogens, which are spiritual tools for awakening. Um, the... Uh, 
it's amazing. They would be surprised of at the at the business level, at the entrepreneur level, the people really making things happen. How many people are actually getting outside of mainstream, going to these adventures, so they can have better visions of themselves and where they want to go. And they're taking this this information they're learning and they're integrating into their business. So those of you that are listening, you're not alone that, um, at all. That this is happening on all levels. This awakening is going on. I mean, this is. A, I never thought I would be going to the jungles and. And uh, same with the other, same with the people that are coming with me. They never thought they'd go to the jungles. And yeah, so some, yeah. This is, a, this is a normal thing. This is not like the first time. Yeah, it's almost like, the, you know, the mainstream or who we think is mainstream and not really mainstream at all anymore because they've got this other, it's like this deep calling for something more in their lives. Like, is it their soul calling or is it something else? You know, whatever you describe it as, but we're, it's like we're all being called to... I don't know, to live um, the way nature intended. Well, maybe that's a beautiful way of describing it. I was going to say live to our our highest potential, but in a different sense, not in the terms of external success so much, but in terms of what we know we're capable of. You know, I I can't say names or anything, but there are people that have everything materially possible of what external, whatever the, you know, take the mainstream success of beautiful family, planes, travel the world (laughs) yachts yachts, whatever and they have all that and uh if that's all it's cracked up to be why are they spending time with these medicine women and men how come it should be all it's cracked up to be so so uh, yeah so it's just but we have to kind of be world bridgers you know we have to kind of take all this spiritual soulful knowledge within us and we got to bring it into this reality instead of um instead of just go there. What kind of, I feel like the people listening are probably world bridgers in a sense. They want to bridge both worlds and that means they got to make things happen. Mm. So you're really talking about the people who have visions or they have, you know, they see beyond the obvious. They're seeing beyond the status quo and what's actually possible for humanity. You're talking about them actually doing something with that, not just sitting on that vision, but actually taking action. Is that where you're getting it? Yeah, yeah. I see so often people that are very awake and and emotionally congruent, and they're you know they're the people that are eating clean, they're meditating. You know, I've been meditating since I've been twenty, and uh, consistently, and eat really healthy, and all that, and. And there's a lot of people that are probably listening that are like that on this. And, and we, we have a responsibility to kind of share that message by being the message as well, not just sharing the message. So I used to think I had a message, you know, and now I realize that my life is kind of, is the message. And so I just do my best to live according to my soul's journey. And, and I often find that there's a, it's kind of that last step for many people that have awakened into themselves at that level. They're eating healthy, but they don't, they're often afraid to bring it to the world. I know for myself, sometimes like even this next thing, just, just even mentioning ethiogens and plants mm. and medicine, that's an edge for me. Like I'm the guy that is Mr. Professional and does the corporate stuff and, and speaks and talks about business and makes money. And, but, but here I am talking about like even mentioning plant medicine. Like that takes courage. Mm. And so for many people that are probably listening, making money might take courage. Yeah. And bringing that in. And then that means they have to be seen. That ha- means they have, to, they, they have to package and position themselves in a way where they have to own their gifts and share those with the world. And uh, that might be what's next. But there's often fear because they usually want to get it perfect before they ever bring it out. So often what I share with them is, you know, just get it good enough, get it out, start with something, start, yeah. make a sale, <laughs> Yeah. you yeah. know, like that, that's, that's big. So uh, find your edge and do it anyway and, and stay on that edge, live at the edge in that way. Yeah. That's great advice. I like it. Stay on the edge and, and, and stay there. <laughs> yeah. Stay there. It's way more fun. I always ask you to, what scares me to, what am I scared to talk about? Talk about that. Yeah, that's cool. Well, so, what am I scared to do? Sell, go sell. So you've just you've just talked to us about what you're scared to talk about, which is plant medicines coming from a business, you know, businessman. Is there anything else you're scared to talk about you want to share today? Um, uh, let's see. What would be inter- another What's your edge? What's my edge? Well, 
the my my edge is every time I think I find it, I think it goes further. Um, Sometimes, you know, I don't really know where I'm going next. That scares me sometimes. I kind of get that. I can't kind of get that feeling that you... You're I've so, let go. You're so, st- you're so used to living on your edge that that's just your new normal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've kind of learned to be comfortable like to with being uncomfortable. Yeah. It, it, it's like, oh, here I am uncomfortable. Uh, and, and that's kind of... The, I've learned to... I used to be really adamant about hit this goal by this goal by this goal. Now I just kind of let it unfold and I'm... I'm more reveled in the mystery. In fact, I used to think that the universe was a mystery to solve. Mm. And then I realized that was all cultural programming, that I'm a problem solver. And now I kind of seem to revel more in the mystery of what's going to happen today. Um, But sometimes I just get stuck in the rigidity of the day too. And that's when I need to just go take a walk. Yeah, yeah. It's so interesting because I get this such a clear view of people coming either from from the highly structured planned angle or the... I live in mystery. I go with the flow of life angle. You know, it's, it seems to be, I mean, so many. It's either or, but I think it's actually life is about having both. Now I think we got to be able to be structured and move things forward. And then at times we got to just be like, and let it go. Yes. It's important to have both skills, isn't it? It it is. It it seems to be at this time. I can only speak from my experience for some people. It may not be important that are living in a, you know, somewhere that that is not needed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Off the grid. That's fine. (laughs) But for the people that are listening, if you're listening to this, you probably want to make something happen or build a business that impacts lives. So that, um, and uh, and it's important to develop that other thing, which is, you know, learn to sell, learn to package your your products in a way that people understand what they are, stuff like that. So tell me a little bit more about that. Then, if people are starting out and they're coming from that, I go with the flow angle of life you know I I live in the mystery and you know action or planning or um, really making it a reality my visions a reality is challenging what do you say to them Uh, well if they're saying they're that living in reality is challenging I mean they are they they are creating their own reality I mean I don't they've read that in every book possible Uh, the I would I would assert really it's kind of simple is that if you're having challenges with money financially, you just don't spend enough time selling and marketing. Hmm. So you have to, you got to look at what are the things that generate you revenue and, and how much time are you actually spending on that? So for example, I had this, I've had people in my classes at things that are getting their, they're very heart centered and everything. They're getting their stuff going. I said, last week, how many calls did you make to actually book yourself speaking? None. Great. Okay. That's why you have no speaking engagements. In the last three weeks, how many potential sales meetings did you have where you were going to talk to somebody about working with you? Maybe it was in your holistic healing. Maybe it was in your coaching. How many potential sales meetings you have? One. And then, and you're wondering why the revenue is not there. Okay. What did you spend your time doing? Well, I took a walk. I contemplated, I started writing my book, but that's not revenue generation in the moment. So they have to kind of, I find for myself, it, I need to, we have to live in more reality in that aspect, which is if, if you want to make more revenue, you have to spend time in revenue generating conversations, which is sales and marketing, which are sometimes terrifying for people be, because you get rejected. People may not like what you have to offer. It's scary. And, but yet if we go to where we're scared, that usually is the best, most fun. And our business kind of can be, I found that my business can be a reflection of me. And so uh, if, if it teaches me, it teaches me where to go next mm. to grow more. Yeah. So um, I really like your, you're so pragmatic in that sense. And then you also have this other spiritual side and, and it's such a beautiful balance and so uh, such rich advice for this sacred business audience because this is the essence of sacred business is making people money and nature equal so that no one or the other is more important and it's embracing everything that this life has to offer what's your take on that i know that the people listening to this probably already have a beautiful meditation practice. They know we have a symbiotic relationship with mother earth. You wouldn't be listening to this if you don't, or you're already on your way to that. So 
I really respect that. And, um, and my heart's there too. And I don't like, you know, this money system is a slavery system. It just is. It's, it's horrible. This is no ifs, ands about it. It's a slavery system. And, uh, and it's something that my little dog just walked in. How appropriate. Uh, yes. <laughs> right um, on cue. <laughs> um, yes. I, and then those things in life that just walk in and your wife walks in. Okay, there goes the animal. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the little animals walk in and you got to be able to just deal with it but it's like that symbiotic relationship with with nature and i you if you're listening you probably have that most likely you want to bring something forth to make a difference in people's lives otherwise like that's what's most important to you and if that's what's most important to you um then it's going to take some courage to bring it out and you're going to have to learn business mm -hmm. it, it, like as much as I want to share that, yeah, it's, you can just keep meditating. It'll just show up. You, then part of it, part of what might need to happen is learning how to sell, learning how to market, spend some time in the areas that, that you resist because um, you've got the hard part down. I guess I'm just speaking to them right now. You've got the hard part down, which is, you know how to be at peace with yourself. You know how to eat clean. You know, you have a connection with mother earth. Now go do the, 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 the easy stuff, which is learn to package, learn to position, learn to sell. And then you will be a world bridger. And then what we can do is we can take the people on in that are wrapped up in that world of that. They actually think that if they make more, that if they have more money and they have more success financially, that they're going to be more of a better person. You can take those people and we can actually support them in realizing that they're just as valuable with or without it. And they're loved no matter what. And then we can have, we can show them, but as long as you're on the other side of the fence and they're on the other side, then there's an if in them. So we have to actually stop making people that have money wrong, people that have success wrong, and we have to actually, the success by mainstream culture. And we have to actually put one foot in their world in a way. Music to my ears, Jeffrey. I love it. I just I, love I, it. I hope, that, I, I, I just, I'm just seeing it. And I, and, I, and I so care so much about the people that are really connected to Mother Earth and they really want to have peace on this planet and want to have a better world, they actually need to come out of the closet in that way. And the way and the vehicle will be business right now. I wish it wasn't another vehicle, but it has to be it's business right now. That's just the car we get in in order to go communicate. And that means you gotta have you gotta have you gotta have bookkeep. You gotta understand your books. You gotta understand how to sell. You gotta understand the market. You have to do that. And then you can drive that beautiful message out in using that vehicle. Mm. Yep, absolutely. So I guess it's a little bit of a come on. <laughs> you can, yeah, can yeah. There's definitely some come on there. It's come out of the closet, you know. Yeah. Burst those doors open and embrace this world, you know, for all its flaws. And yes, we live in a slavery money system, but it doesn't. We don't have to make a judgment of that. We can still participate in it and transform it. Well, I think that's what we actually signed up for in some weird way. Uh, that I was, I woke up one morning and I was like talking to my wife and she's like, I'm like, you know, this isn't, this, this, this system's insane. It's absolutely insane. And, uh, and I said, but I love this world. Like I love the world. I don't necessarily, I don't, you know, I don't love the system. Like, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's insane. I think we're going sane. I found myself going sane in an insane world. Mm. And the people listening to this, you're not alone. And, and also, it's happening at the top, the so-called top that is no top. The hierarchy, the illusion of hierarchy, it's actually happening there and the, the systems are falling down. Yeah. So yes. let's, let's bring forth something new, but we have to kind of be world bridgers. Yes. I'll, I, and I really want to finish up on that note because we are world bridges and that's key for the sacred business audience and probably your audience too, you work with a lot of these bridges, you know, coming from and, one side of the fence or the other. You know, and, and you know what they, whether they admit it or not, they are, um, yeah, they're just in places I would never expect. And then they're starting to bring this in, this, this element of empathy mm. into their business. The days are over where humanness is checked at, where your humanness is checked at the door for companies. Those businesses will die. And, uh, yeah, 
that's what's coming. And, and so, so we, the people listening, maybe you're just getting ready for the new wave, but we got to surf that wave. You have to, you have to get on the wave. And, and that's why it's so good that they're listening to things like this, but there's so much more. I don't have all the answers. The people that are listening have everything they need inside of them, but they, they, they just probably need to just go learn a little more tactical business stuff and maintain that sacred connection to themselves and mother earth along the way. Beautiful. Oh, that's such a, that's such a perfect note to finish up on. Thank you, Jeffrey, so yeah. much. I love your, your balanced approach to business. It is so rewarding to listen to you. So thank you. you you're welcome. I'll, I'll share that that balanced approach back in the day might not have gotten you billions. The people, if you, to make billions, you know, there's that balance can get lost. Mm. Um, but I, I think it's fine. I think what we're moving to is that, is that people can have that balance. I remember I was on the plane with my dad and uh, my dad is the founder of, um, uh, well, the first CEO and founder of a um, company called Odesk, which is now merged with Elance. And it's the largest in this industry and it's huge. And uh, he was on a plane, we were, we were heading over to go on some adventures um, on a leadership summit. And I said, dad, you know, I've learned a lot from you. What would you, what have you learned from me? And he said, son, if I could redo my life, I would have started with what's the lifestyle that I want first. Yeah. And then I would have built a business to support my lifestyle. Mm. And uh, instead of the other way around where I built, just wanted to build a business and, uh, and then I tried to jam my lifestyle into it. So first, ask what kind of life you want, where you want to live, how you want to live, who you want to spend your time with. Then ask what business supports that. And then learn to sell, learn to market, and build that vehicle of business and be a world bridger along the way. So, Woohoo. I feel like I should yeah. get, you know, be cheering in the background <laughs> now. Cue music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Jeffrey, um, for our listeners and viewers, how can they get in touch with you or, you know, absorb more of your magic? Sure. Uh, it's only magical if they say it's magical. We're all magic, <laughs> right? I mean, the, the, there's such a, we, what, what creates magic, I do this event, which is pretty magical to the people that come to this event. I do this event called Free Humanity Event. It's all over Australia. It's also um, Asia as well, but let's just focus on Australia. So it's freehumanityevent.com. They go there. It's a two-day experience. It's two days of a bridge between kind of that spirit and business. And people just walk away. And the community is incredible. There's hundreds of people. They love it. seem to really love it. Some people don't like it. They usually leave by 11 o'clock because they just can't handle it. It's fine with me. That's one thing I've learned is you can't please everybody. Um, <laughs> and some people really love it. And, uh, and it's two-day experience and it's free. It's, it's worth thousands of dollars come and they can do that. I also have thousands of documentaries on my website. So go enjoy, go, go take that knowledge and go apply it. Fantastic. Go searching. You'll find him. I can tell you that you'll find him all over the internet. So yeah. thank you, Jeffrey Slater for being with us today. Such magic that you share with us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.